He's a musician, an eccentric, and for the last 40 years, he's been working nights as the host of TV's longest ever running series. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And a very happy new year to you all. Stars, whatever you're looking at. With Patrick Moore at the helm, the sky at night has steered clear of flashy graphics and TV wizardry, sticking resolutely to its own tried and tested formula. Astronomy, astronomy, and more astronomy. It's pointing to yourself. People like it. And um, therefore, if it works, why change it? And we haven't. Even the same music. And the same goes for the 1908 typewriter, at which he's hammered out four decades' worth of sky at night scripts. Remarkably, Patrick still regards himself as an amateur, even after writing 60 books and having an asteroid named after him. 50 million light years away back on Earth, Patrick Moore's star base is Selzy, West Sussex. At home, when he's not tinkering with his telescopes, you're liable to find him composing waltzes. Or exercising on the bone shaker bike he's had since boyhood. The young Patrick was a sickly child. A weak heart often confined him to bed. There, one day, he read a book that was to change his life. It belonged to his mother, who was fascinated by outer space. Her drawings of little green men awoke a passion that was to last a lifetime. But when war broke out in 1939, a promising career was put on hold as Patrick enlisted as a navigator in RAF Bomber Command. There was a wartime romance and then tragedy as his girlfriend was killed. I've never married. No secret there. My girl was killed during the war and there was nobody else for me, so um, I remain a bachelor, which I regret very much, but these things happened. I missed out on family life, but um, blame the late Herr Hitler. After the war, Patrick began to build a reputation as an astronomer, and when in April 1958 he was offered the chance to host a new series for the BBC, a star was born. Good evening. Well, I'm afraid Burnham's Comet turned out to be something of a disappointment. In the programme's 40 years, he's covered everything from lunar landings... I was on the moon one day. ...to solar eclipses... And that is the end of this eclipse of the century, and by Jove, was it worth seeing? But nothing's made him more famous than his style, much imitated, but uniquely his own. Hello, good evening, and welcome to this special... <laughs> People have been writing into the sky at night asking various questions about astronomy. Well, of course, it is a fascinating subject. <laughs> the impersonators may be good, but the man himself has usually gone one better. No one can accuse me of failing to laugh at myself. I remember years ago, uh, two comedians were doing a turn. So the two East End comedians not doing too bad, looking at there. That was myself and Magnus Pike. We were the hit parade of 1887. <laughs> <laughs> In the TV galaxy, few bodies shine brighter than Patrick Moore. But how does our favourite starman envisage the future? Will science fiction become science fact? Next century, lunar bases, men to Mars, contact with other civilizations? I don't know. I'd love to see it. But it's sadly I won't, but after all, others will. Patrick Moore may never visit Mars, but his journey on our little planet has never been less than out of this world.